Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Booz. I'm a developer advocate here at Timescale. And today I'd like to talk to you about saving money and improving the performance of your time series database by learning how to manage that data effectively. Now we know that time series data is just relentless. And so uh, in this presentation, we'd like to talk to you about what it means to manage that time series data. Uh, really give you a quick overview of some of the phases of managing data as it comes in all the way through the end of its life before it's dropped from the database. And then show you how in TimescaleDB, we've really tried to thoughtfully prepare uh, an application that provides value in, in a number of features to help you manage that data over time. So what does it mean to manage your data? Now, as I said at the beginning, we know that time series data specifically is really becoming relentless. It is ubiquitous everywhere you look. Every application is tracking something about what's going on over a period of time. It grows really at an ever-increasing rate, and it just it can become so expansive and unwieldy that it's hard to manage and query, uh, and really hard to store sometimes in a cost-effective manner. But you know, we believe that you can really effectively manage time series data if uh, you have the tools to do it, and really continue to let your application be as high performance as it, as it possibly can and still being cost effective for you and for your clients. Now, you know, I see this all the time. These are, are quotes that we've seen elsewhere, uh, usually in our Slack, on Twitter, other places, people hitting this moment where they have to make a decision. And maybe you're in that moment right now. Maybe you're at the beginning of a new application and you're wondering things like this. You've done some calculations. You know, will I be able to store this amount of data every day? Will TimescaleDB be able to do that for me? Or I'm currently ingesting 2.5 million metrics in Prometheus every minute. Can TimescaleDB and, and PromScale backed by TimescaleDB, can it help? Can it manage that kind of data for me and do it in a, in a fashion that frees my time and, and money? You know, I need to store lots of data for a year or more, and I want it to be queryable, and I want it to have aggregates. Can Timescale DB do that? So whether you are in this position, you know these exact numbers right now, or you're just, you know, you're teetering on that moment of, I want to do the fastest thing, and I'm just going to spin up a database that I know I can quickly get working on, but I might not know where it's going to be in a year, and if this database can help me manage that data particularly if it, you know, maybe this application becomes very successful. I think these are the things you really need to, to really consider and what we'd like to talk about for the next few minutes. And so everything we're talking about, you know, we're coining a term kind of called data lifecycle management. And the reason we decided to do it this way was it really seemed to relate to application lifecycle management. If you've been in the application uh, space, the development space, you've heard that term. And it really just talks about a cycle of application development, coming up with an idea, putting it into practice, putting it in production, and then getting feedback to improve the process. Data management is the exact same process. You, you get data, you have to figure out how to get that data uh, first, and then it works through this life that gets to a point where you're trying to bring more value out of it. Eventually, you need to figure out how to maybe save money and not store as much of it. And at some point, you need to actually drop the data because it's just not valuable anymore. It's so old, it doesn't relate to where the application and that time series data has gotten to now. And so this life cycle is what we'd like to discuss today. It, it, and it really comes down to how you can effectively manage it with features, right? Any, any application data layer you're using needs to have features, uh, should have features that help you manage each of these phases. Really the big thing here is knowing you're gonna have long-term success. And what I've come to learn by working with users in Slack channel, uh, you know, in my other application jobs, is that when something like any of these features are not available, in your application or your data layer, it's incumbent upon you. You will eventually have to deal with these things and you'll have to deal with it through third-party applications or your own application code. And so that's a really powerful thing you need to consider. What is the cost to you? What is the cost to your team and your application? And then anything you can do to automate it is just brings a, a lot of freedom that uh, otherwise you're gonna have to manage on a day-by-day -day basis. So taking all of these things into account, you know, I want to consider timescale DB and, and just really hit home that as you look at those quotes, as you consider uh, how we show you, we work with this within timescale, it's really about thinking about it for this reason. If you haven't hit this point or you're watching this video because you were already at this point, you recognize that without good management, you're going to be overwhelmed. It's going to cost you time. That time is going to cost you physical money because maybe you need to increase the resources of your servers and your storage, or it's going to cost you human time and money. 
And effectively, it's probably going to store, slow down your application. It's not going to be as, as performant as it used to be. And so let's think about how we can help you manage that with TimescaleDB, DB, particularly if this is something you'd like to consider. So let's start at the top, ingesting data. Now, ingesting and storing it efficiently is done through something we call hypertables. So with TimescaleDB, DB, it is Postgres, and we add abstractions on top of regular Postgres features like tables. So you create a table like you always have, and then you turn it into a hypertable with a function that we provide. The hypertable then turns the, uh, the parent table into smaller chunks. Those smaller chunks provide value in a way, as you'll see as we go through this presentation, each of the features that we provide work on that chunk, uh, uh, chunk by chunk because it really gives us a good uh, boundary in which to, to manage the data in the application. One of the things you can do then, uh, because it's in chunks, is we can ingest data very quickly. We're partitioning it for you. Only the data that is in memory is the most recent data you're ingesting most of the time, and so it means that ingest is very, very fast. Querying recent data is very, very fast. But you can also compress data to store uh, more data on the disks you already have. And so maybe you just started and you realize you're quickly growing and, and running out of disk space. Rather than adding more disk, you can turn on compression. And that will save often uh, you know, 10 times the disk space over, over 10x compression in most cases uh, so that you can really provide more value. And now that you have that data in, you've got to be able to query it effectively. And really that's again where TimescaleDB can shine because we simply add time series superpowers to Postgres, right? So you're using the same SQL that you are already using within your application. Whether it's an uh, object relational mapper, an ORM in, an app, in, in a programming language, or Python or .NET or whatever it, might, whatever it might be, or just raw SQL, you're using the same tooling. You don't have to change anything about the tooling you're using and you can keep writing the same SQL. Now, we do provide specific functions like time bucket and some others to help you effectively manage time series specific data. We do modify the query planner within Postgres to more effectively query your time series data in hypertables, but it's always SQL that you're writing. You don't have to change your language or think about new ways to interact with the application. So now that the data is in and you're sure that you can keep querying it, there's going to come a time where as more data comes in, you often have to report or graph on longer periods of time. Now we do this through something called continuous aggregates. Continuous aggregates is a superset. It's really a replacement for Postgres materialized views. And the advantage is this, a materialized view takes a query, turns it into actual data in the database that you can index and you can query, and it doesn't go away. The problem is in almost every other database that does uh, materialize views, when you need to refresh that data, you've imported more data or you've updated some underlying data. When you refresh the materialized view, what it actually does is create a whole new view for the entire span of time, drop the original view, and then replace it. Now that takes a lot of resource, a lot of processing, and it's not actually something that you can keep up to date very quickly, particularly as your time grows. In uh, TimescaleDB, we actually keep smaller individual portions of that continuous aggregate up to date, so you never have to drop the entire continuous aggregate. It's actually a new type of data that can live for a long period of time separate from the underlying hypertable raw data uh, because it's only updated for the slices that have been modified as new data comes in or is updated. It's a really effective way to keep uh, zoomed out views of your data, you know, maybe averages of days and weeks in a way that otherwise would take a lot of processing power and again, spend more time and effort to do so. Now, even when you've done all of these things and you have raw data and you have these aggregates and you're querying things effectively, as your data grows, you're probably going to at least want to do something with archiving or data tiering. Now, data tiering is a really neat feature to be able to use because we use something called Postgres uh, table spaces. It's a way to say, hey, maybe this data after six months, uh, as an example, I still want to be able to query it like I normally do, but I'm okay if it's slower, and I just want to save money on storage. So you can create a new table space on slower, cheaper storage, maybe in your cloud environment, and then you can slowly move chunks as they age onto that slower storage. So it still works, your queries still can find that data, uh, you don't have to change a thing. There's no interruption to your application. You just end up saving money on the, where the data is stored in exchange for maybe a little bit slower response time. 
Now, if that doesn't work and you actually want to do something different, or maybe you want to archive, you can actually use our custom job scheduler to write your own stored procedure and do whatever you would like with the data. You can archive it, you can uh, send it somewhere else, you can maybe put it in a different database. So we give you a lot of flexibility for data tearing and archiving. But beyond that, whether you've hit all of these phases uh, now or in the future with your time series data, there will come a time where that data is just not as valuable as it used to be and you will want to delete it. And so we make dropping data very quick and efficient because we work on chunks. In most other databases, if you do something like delete you know, X for this time range, it might seem to happen very quickly, but most databases only actually mark that data for the deletion. It doesn't actually get deleted at that moment. It's another process that comes along later to do it. In TimescaleDB, we let you actually drop chunks, and because they're actually smaller tables underneath that master table, that hyper table, it actually is dropped instantly like a regular database. It's transactional, and that space is freed up immediately for you to reuse. So you save resources and you save processing. And the reason you'd want to do this, it's not just because the data is maybe less valuable now than it used to be, but it actually means you're storing less data. So other things like maintenance, maybe you need to do maintenance on your indexes. If there is less data, all of that work will uh, be more effective and efficient as well. Like everything else, you can do that on a retention policy on a scheduled basis uh, so that you don't even have to think about it. You can tell Timescale when to actually drop that data for you and finally go back to managing your application and your users, not your data. And really that's one of the keys that I hope you've noticed through even just a brief description of each of these features. The automation is something we thought about in every single one of these features. Whether we provide the exact automation or not, you have a way to automate these tasks and that really brings you freedom. So whether we provide a policy for compression or continuous aggregates or retention, Anything we don't provide, there's always the uh, what we call user-defined actions. It's a job scheduler that allows you to write your own store procedures to do whatever you would like to better manage the data for your specific situation. So if this excites you and you're realizing these are some of the uh, features that you need, you know, I'd really encourage you to come and sign up for a free trial. We uh, have a hosted solution that you can get a free trial for 30 days, 100%. Uh, you can do whatever you'd like, follow tutorials, and really experience this for yourself. See how some of these features work with large scale time series data. You can find a number of examples and docs. We'll link to one or two of them below in the description. Uh, please come join us in our Slack channel. Uh, we have thousands of active community members helping one another. You'll find me and other timescale uh, engineers there from time to time doing our best to help. And you're always welcome to reach out to me on Twitter. My handle is at Ryan Booz. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, we are producing more content almost every week to help you better understand time series data, Postgres, and TimescaleDB. And we'd love to see how we could help you in your journey with timescale data. Hopefully this was very helpful and, and look forward to seeing you in any of these uh, places sometime soon. Take care.